are the type of projects that you would like to do, then we would actively encourage you to follow this interest and to approach somebody and say, you know, I think the work you're doing is fantastic, I would like to do a project with you. We will help you to do this. Um, I don't know how many projects have been won so far, but they've been quite diverse and quite huge. And those two projects are the same, and the diversity on them have got all the way through from uh, trialing new mobile phone apps for people scanning barcodes in supermarkets to improve their diet, right the way through to actually participating in clinical trials, from cell and molecular work in laboratories, and the way to sort of field trials. I mean, there's, there's very little that we haven't seen in some way, shape, or form already. And so there's something that you particularly want to do and there's somebody you know is doing this area of research, we would actively encourage you to get in touch with them and say, can I work with you, can I do this type of project? And sometimes they'll say no, and sometimes they'll say actually it's finishing, or sometimes they'll say, well, it's doing something else, we don't really cut it to do that. But an awful lot of times they'll say yes. And if you don't ask, then you don't get it. we'll help. We will help. Um, we also have lists of people who have run projects last year, and people who are offering projects again, or something already got in mind, I think it'd be just a nice thing for a uh, project team to do. And so we show you the lists, and there might be something on there that captures your imagination, so actually, that's what I'm going to do. And some things just pop up, so this year, for example, we had two students who worked on the Dry January scheme. So Dry January is this post-Christmas health kick that people are encouraged to go on and to give out and they try to make themselves feel better. Well, this was run, as one of our hospitals were all free, and there were 100 members of the public involved in this, and they were studying to see what difference it makes giving up alcohol and adopting a healthier lifestyle immediately post-Christmas. And some good results. And a couple of students have got some great projects, and the probability is that they'll get a name on papers as well. There's lots, there's lots going on. I will try and find out as much as we can to tell you about it, but we will inevitably not know everything. But you'll find out stuff. And you'll find out stuff, you have a great idea, or you'll just see something and think, do you know, I would like to do something with that. And you'll come to us and say, can I do this? And I'm saying yes. We can find a way to make you do it, or help you to do it, and we will. Is there any questions about projects? Okay, it's a long way off. It seems a long way off. We won't start on this until about April time next year. But we'll try and get you all sorted out and fixed up with a month of supervisor so you can start to get involved in the, the project and the reading and things. Before Christmas, we'll cut this off by December to allocate every day. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I want to talk about um, model making. That's the important thing. Or should I talk about the time table? Do you want to know where you are on Wednesday? Okay. Model making. Do anybody just have a kit yet? To give a few more hours. Do anybody not have one? You don't? Okay. Have they also not one yet? Okay, so um, this is uh, the first thing you need to know about the um, University of Lyme. This is a two terabyte hard drive. And uh, sitting inside this rubber mounted, and inside is another one that's rubber mounted. And basically, I never carry information on my laptop. I always carry it as a backup and then back it up to the machine at home. And why do I do that? Well, laptops get stolen. And I just hate it when. A student says to me, my laptop's been stolen and all my work has gone with it. So I strongly recommend you get uh, one, of, one of these things. Whoops. But you can drop them actually from quite a good height. They're not about it. Um, just get one of these, back up your stuff. Okay, just back it up. Put it in the cloud with your OneDrive or iCloud or whatever. Just back up the stuff so that you're not carrying your life's work around with you. All right, so this is um, the laptop. So, um, what I'm going to do now is just find this and lock the drive. There you go. We're in business. <coughs> and so all of my life now is on this hard drive, including the entire program. So here it is, UCL. And if you look down here, the whole VM ever sees on this. And here 
is the timetable which is just coming up. And the timetable is a work of art. It's a thing of great beauty, I have to say, because we have 120 different lecturers who are delivering these two programs. So you can imagine that um, Nathan and Paul and myself, um, we organize 10 modules, which is the equivalent of 10 six-day conferences with world-class speakers. Okay, so that's, that's how it works. And if we're looking here at Wednesday, so on the first teaching day, Wednesday, we're going to be able to write this down, because it's not up yet on the thing. We're in Birkbeck College, in Lunnett Street, in room B18. So that's Birkbeck College, Lunnett Street, George, wouldn't it be a good idea for everyone to send you their current email addresses? I, I've got that. And then we yeah. could just uh, circulate the timetable. Yeah, I'll send the timetable out. But look, um, just to say, we're in, just write it down, we're in Birkbeck College, Mallet Street, B18. I'll send it out to you all your personal email addresses. So I can do that, just send it out uh, when I get back to my office. Question? Is it for the UCL um, there's a... Uh, I have a UCL Go application in my smartphone yeah. and it appears just like that. But it would be very helpful to us to check whether uh, what will be our lecture, what will be our classes. It, it appears the same when you are doing things. Oh, okay, right. Good. Good. So um, what's happened is the room booking to actually put this booking up <laughs> against this module. Mm -hmm. So UCL Go will tell you where you are going to be. UCL Go application. So it's fine for a smartphone, it's great for uh, an iPhone, yeah. Android, but uh, sadly, not for Windows phone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's where we'll be on Wednesday, and then on Friday, if you look at uh, Friday, the first session we're going to have is in Drayton House, and Drayton House is on Euston Road, and I'll show you where Drayton House is when we go on our walking tour uh, afterwards. <coughs> and then after that, we run from Drayton House, well, actually, it's just on the corner, we go to the Bloomsbury Theatre, and they have a studio there, like an acting and dance studio. And we will have uh, an session with uh, an actress, with Abigail Rose, and she will teach you how to give presentations. So you start with the artists. And you end up with doing improvisation and comedy and all sorts of things. That's really good. Okay, so that's what you need to know. Okay. Uh, nine o'clock. Nine o'clock start. Uh, this is a Friday, so the timetable is just two days a week, and it's nine till six, which is pretty intensive, but it's better than spreading it over the whole week. Um, so on Wednesday we'll see you at Birkbeck College, and on Friday I'll see you at Drayton House at 9 o'clock. And um, I'll attempt to tell you how to read your scientific paper. Question. But for a part time, you're attending Wednesday the first year, is that right? Correct, that's right. Yeah. <coughs> You've been studying eating disorders, obviously. It's just Wednesday. Any other questions about the timetable? Okay, right. Uh, let's tell you a little bit about now. Um, what it is I'm looking for um, with these kits that I've given you. So this is going to be for the uh, this is for the first lecture, and it's about model making. So between now and Wednesday, you're going to attempt to make some molecular models. And I've given you these molecular models. They've got little, uh, they're like little spiders and then you put a uh, bomb through So you need to make sure you can identify the carbon atoms. You need to make sure that you can identify whether it's got four valencies or two of them are engaged with a double bond. And then you also need to make sure you've chosen the right length of bond. Uh, otherwise you get music molecules. Okay, I think you get one with this big and this big. Because they just choose the right length. And 
what we're going to do is to mix some carbohydrates. So these are the simplest ones. The simplest carbohydrate uh, structures. We've got glucose and fructose. Um, and you can get really adventurous. Once you make glucose, you can start to make glucose polymers. And there are three polymers of glucose, as you know. Uh, there's amylose. So amylose, you find it's uh, an alpha 1,4 linked glucose um, molecule. So you need to make sure you've got the orientation of the bond in the correct alpha configuration. Or we've got cellulose, which is beta 1,4 linked. So if you make cellulose, make sure you do that. And if you're going to make dextran, and dextran is the carbohydrate that builds up on teeth, that is made from uh, sucrose by glucosyl transferase that makes dextran, um, then that is an alpha 1,6 linkage. So have a go at it. If you're feeling really uh, excited about this, well, you can make a disaccharide if you want, so you can make some sucrose uh, with a sweet molecule. And then you can go a bit further, you can start to make some fatty acids. So you can make this whole series. And just look at, when you've made it, just look at the shape of the molecule, how it naturally falls. And so, for example, you'll notice um, that this alpha linolenic acid has got a couple of kinks in it. It's not a linear molecule. Or you can get really excited, you get really good at this, and you can start to make amino acids. Uh, but make sure you get, make the L or the D form. Make sure you use the L form. And then what I want you to do is to just practice making these, and then come along to the lecture. Now the really important bit about these kits is that when they go back to uh, Professor Seller in chemistry, they have to be about the same size as what he learned them to be, and with the same number of bits of pieces in them. So on Wednesday you'll get together with someone else who's made glucose, and you're making glucose polymer, for example. If you made amino acids, you can recognise what it is, you make small peptides. So try and make simple disaccharides. See if you can make the different forms of glucose between now and then. And then what I want you to do is to um, have a look at aspartame, which is this one here. So this is the sweetener aspartame, which is a dipeptide. So it's aspartyl phenylalanine omethyl ester. And see the methyl we've seen on the far end of it, uh, over on the right. So just have a go at that, and then we can talk during the lecture about how the structure uh, influences and changes uh, activity. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Paul, do you have some words to say? I have a few, yes. Yes. Yeah.
going to be linked to the internet, will it? It's going to be on the internet, will it? No, it's not going to be. Something to be recognised again here. Good, so I've already introduced us. Uh, we're, we're running the eating disorders side. Um, could you just put your hands up who's doing the eating disorders one time? I mean, okay, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, okay, great. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to go through that. I hope you don't mind I'll be just saying stuff which, which is not completely relevant to the other students, never mind. Uh, this, is, this was our, our second year. Um, as, I say, as you can see, we've grown. We started three years ago with two students. And we had uh, these, uh, I think it's eight in the second year. We had uh, all together 12, 13 last year. So it's obviously continuing to grow. Yeah. Yes, that's right. That's a reminder. <laughs> um, um, when we split, we're, we're going to split into groups, aren't we? What I'm going to ask you to do is to sit with your name on a piece of paper and I'm going to go around with my iPhone and take a photo of you. <laughs> Otherwise it's completely hopeless. I've no, no, no idea who you are. <laughs> so if you don't mind doing that, if you perhaps pre prepare by, by putting your name in capitals on a, on a piece of paper, that would be helpful then I could put it, put it in front of you like a, like a mug shot. Okay, so this is, um, uh, uh, out of the ten modules, two of them are um, eating disorders specific. And this is G9, G A S N G O O 9, uh, which is the one for this term, and we call that clinical science. And um, it's um, it, it's uh, a bit of basic physiology. It's um, it's uh, etiology, epidemiology. Um, clinical features, those sorts of things, anything, everything except treatment, really. And we've got some, uh, uh, there's people from St. Anne's, Eric Sabine, there's people from GOS, Dasha Nichols coming, um, some people from UCL, uh, someone who used to be at UCL is now at University of Anglia, uh, someone from UCH, a physician from UCH, um, I do a couple, we do some clinical sessions, Rachel is from GOS, Darren got here from uh, Royal Free, um, and then um, the, the rest. Nadia what was here. Uh, Darren's taken over from her this, this year because she'd gone back to America, but she was so keen to lecture that she says she's going to do it on Skype. And uh, if it actually works, let's hope it works. But I do have her on audio as well, so like, <coughs> if the worst gets the worst, I'll put her picture up and play the audio. <laughs> Um, or virtually all our lectures, you can see here, we've got recordings of almost all of them, but some of them, like the yellow ones, where we change the lecturer. There's, you can look at the recordings, but, you know, it's not going to be that relevant. Uh, it'll, it'll be extra, probably. And uh, we've got PowerPoint presentations on pretty much everything that's relevant. Uh, I mean, not for the clinical session, because that's a PowerPoint presentation. So you've got, as, as, as George said, we've got if you miss something, make sure you catch up on it. Now there's something else about that which I want to say. This is for next term, for the January, February term, where um, brilliantly we're, we're pretty well in the same room every week, which is great. Um, and we've got people, we've got um, people from the Maudsley coming, uh, from St. Anne's, um, Ulrika Schmidt, a world famous uh, professor from, uh, from the uh, Institute of Psychiatry. So, um, and that's, that's all, and Janet Treasure as well, OBE. Um, 
She's, um, and they're, they're going to be talking all about treatment, all aspects of treatment. Um, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to ask you to comment on, on things. Do you want to, yeah, yeah, you want to jump in? Yeah, so, I, yeah, I will carry yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the opiates. They, I think, I'll stop talking. It's my back. It's not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And then we've got the MARZIPAN course. MARZIPAN stands for Management of Really Sick Patients with Anorexia Nervosa, uh, which is something that was developed here, um, which is really trying to get um, people who work in uh, uh, general units, especially general medical units, to um, treat patients with severe, very severe anorexia nervosa in, a, um, in an effective way. Because we've heard of 15 to 20 deaths of mostly young people who've gone into medical wards, they don't know what to do with them, the patients sabotage their treatment, and they don't know how to manage them. So we've written this very detailed, this is what you do, and this is what not to do. Um, and um, it's become uh, quite, uh, quite widespread now. Uh, it's, we're trying to spread it as far as possible. So that we run, a, this is a whole course, on that, and that course, is open to outsiders, so it'll be you and the other people as well coming from outside. Do you want to jump in at all? Yeah, um, so just to say, I'm a child and adolescent psychiatrist, born and adult psychiatrist. We both work with patients with eating disorders. Do you want to do any clinical work at the moment? A little bit. I do. Still doing stuff. I'm basically a clinician primarily, so I've always been interested in research, but my main job is kind of clinical work, and so I work with young people from zero right the way up to 18. Most of them are probably about 14 to sort of 16, but I have patients as young as eight, and I have quite a few people who I then end up referring on to palsy in St. Anne's. So for me, I'm very interested, um, in terms of, I was very grateful to come Paul and George for inviting me to be part of this NSC, because I'm very keen for us at the Royal Court to do more research, and our big difficulty is we, as clinicians, don't often have the time really to kind of do it. We've got quite a few kind of ideas. So if any of you are interested in doing some projects working with younger people with eating disorders, then I'd be very interested to think about how we can help think about that. Yeah. And so that's, that's something we want you to think about if you're doing the eating disorders thing. Is are you more interested in the younger patients under 18, or are you more interested in the in the older patients over 18? Um, we would encourage you not all to go to one group. Uh, in fact, you can all go to Darren's group, and I'll just uh, step in and watch videos. <laughs> but uh, generally, half and half is what we can manage. So, um, uh, but of course, the under 18s are there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the, the thing about the under 18s is that they've got they've got no commitment to them. They know that when they reach 18, they refer them to us, and we've got them till they're 99. <laughs> so, yeah. Right, because you see a bit, a bit of tension there. Um, now, there's a, there's a difference between our two, um, the two courses on, in the way we handle statistics. Um, uh, the, uh, the general, uh, the uh, um, public health side uh, use Excel, and our lecturer is very keen on people learning SPSS. So, what we've asked you to do, I've written to most people, most people just have an, uh, an email from me saying, please download SPSS as soon as you can, as soon as you've got a, uh, um, uh, a, um, uh, um, a password and an access code for, uh, for, for uh, the UCL, because you can get it free. I mean, if you want to make five and a half thousand pounds, you can, but um, it's better free, I think. Um, so, uh, and YouTube is absolutely full of uh, how to do, how to do it at SPSS. You don't have to go very far, I mean, as long as you can do conscriptives, um, T tests, um, basic ANOVA, maybe a bit of uh, covariance as well, that, that would be plenty. And then put a bit of regression as well, I think. And then uh, you'll, you'll get more out of, the, uh, out of the lecture. The clinical placement is a thing which is very is different between, our, uh, between the, the, um, the two sides, the, um, um, uh, the um, public health side and ours. Um, we ask you to choose a, a clinical placement. And we have um, three placements which are child and adolescent and one placement, big one, which is uh, adult. So I'll talk about the adult, which is St. Anne's, it's in Tottenham. 
um, uh, and um, uh, it's a um, it's got inpatients, uh, day patients, outpatients, outreach, um, community, uh, psychotherapy, psychology, uh, family therapy. It's got it's got pretty well the whole range of interventions and assessments, and it's a big unit. I think the I think, the, I think it's 20 beds. Something like that. So it's a big unit. So we've got we've got we've got some room. Uh, I do I have to do a lot of uh, di diplomatic work um, to uh, make sure that you're uh, sort of fully welcomed when you go there, uh, rather than uh, sort of thing that can happen. So I do as much as, as, much as I can. Um, so if you're interested in that side, then. Uh, let me know, Ms. Hasno, that uh, you want to do the adult side. Um, do you want to say something about the child placements? So, uh, so, if you happen to be in the Royal Three, then the Royal Three is in the very close to Belsize Park Tube. The other tube nearby is Swiss Cottage, it's also the other round to Castle Heath. Um, and so, our service is primarily outpatient based, but it's very innovative because we also do a lot of outreach work. We see people at home or in schools. We also have an intensive eating disorder service, that's a paediatric ward, where we have people in for brief admissions, primarily for medical stabilisation. So a big focus in terms of how our service was set up, and we'll tell you more about this, was to actually try to help young people stay out of inpatient eating disorder units. There's lots of research suggests that's really doesn't give you the best outcomes. Okay, so we can talk more about that. In terms of the other two placements, because it's the first year on, on course for me, I don't know very much what might happen at uh, North East London or Great Ormond Street. I think North East London will probably accept one student. Right. Uh, Great Ormond Street depends on Dasha and whether she can accept one. So I can, I can, I can we'll have an approach. Dasha. Yeah. Yeah. Great, thank you. Um, just to say, these are the ones that, um, uh, these are. Within the eating disorders group, this, this is uh, these are the subjects that were done by by the uh, nine students who did did our course. Uh, these are the nine full-time students because the part-timers, well, might still be here. I don't know. Anyway, uh, they're doing those next year. So one was a um, an audit, which was taking uh, the notes from uh, from an inpatient unit and um, uh, and seeing what happened. Uh, two years after they were discharged, two or more years after they were discharged, and I can tell you, it's very revealing um, about you know what, what are we actually doing as an inpatient uh, in inpatient units. So uh, Darren mentioned that uh, there are issues about you know is 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 inpatient care the best way to manage eating disorders, and I have my own views on that, and and no doubt you'll develop your own views. Um, this was a really interesting study looking at um, a maternal eating disorder, the mother has an eating disorder, and looking at the bonding uh, that occurs, the attachment that occurs between the mother and the baby. Um, and uh, uh, the third one um, was really looking at health education mostly, to say, is early health education a trigger for eating disorders? Because a lot of patients say it is. That they're told they must be fat, they must be this, that, that, and the other, they mustn't go over a certain BMI, and it can trigger off an eating disorder. So that's, that was that. Sexuality and gender, and that was an interesting one in terms of methodology, because there's a thing called the, um, the UCL um, volunteer uh, list, or I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a list, or it's a, it's a register. And anyone can get on it, not only UCL students or staff can go on it, anyone can go on it. And really there are people who want to be involved in research projects. And uh, you, so you, you, you put an advert saying, I want um, males between uh, uh, six foot and seven foot. Well, I probably didn't get many there. Okay. I want, want males um, who are, um, um, uh, have, have had, um, no other psychiatric problems, or uh, uh, and, uh, and you're saying, I'll give you five pounds for uh, if you do this interview. And that's what this student did. She did a, she did a, a, an unselected sample of males. She did eating disorder interviews online with them, uh, questionnaires, fill in questionnaires, and she did sex role questionnaires as well. 
um, uh, looking at um, looking whether sexuality and um, particularly uh, masculinity, femininity was linked to a tendency towards eating disorders. And uh, that was a so that methodology is is incredibly powerful. I mean, she in no time, especially when she puts up the uh, the man she was giving her, uh, in no time she got 110. Uh, um, participants. So, okay, next one. This was looking at, this was part, part of another project, uh, a big project which is going on at the um, Institute of Child Health, um, looking at saying, does binge eating disorder affect the baby's weight? And it does actually. So that was that. Um, this was uh, number six, was uh, looking at uh, patients with severe and enduring eating disorders, long term eating disorders, more than seven years and looking at their uh, vitamin levels and their micronutrient levels with the question, should we be giving micronutrients like vitamin supplements to patients with long-standing eating uh, anorexia nervosa? It's a good, good question. Um, seven and eight was qualitative study. You asked about qualitative. Uh, we, do a, um, we encourage qualitative studies. Over the years now we've done several. Um, and uh, this was a qualitative study of males' experience with eating disorders and, this, and the services. And two students did that, and because they each did four cases, which is not that many for a paper, but eight is probably enough for a paper. So I've asked them to come together and write something for publication. And somebody asked about, can you do something else when you're in country? And this was um, a uh, body satisfaction and uh, eating disorder symptoms in a university, university students in Lebanon, because the, uh, the student, uh, that's where the student came from, from Beirut. So just to show you that uh, the sort of, you can see there's a range of things that you can, you can do. And basically, if you've got an idea, as, uh, as you've been told, if you've got an idea, come to us and we'll help you make it into a, a project, which is suitable. And we're very keen on, first of all, submitting um, uh, your, your work as abstracts to the conference. I, uh, I'm, I'm uh, organising an uh, international conference in London, here, very near here, in, uh, in March, and I'm hoping all the students from our year will be putting abstracts into that conference. And as you know, papers can, can arise from that. Um, <clears throat> well, actually, I've, I've done all this, so don't worry about that. <laughs> that's, that's, what I've, um, that's what I've just been talking about. And that's all I've got to say. Unless you do, you want to say something about, you, you've said something about research yeah. projects at um, and, and World Free. Yeah, so basically yeah. we would really welcome any ideas you mm -hmm. have. Equally, we have quite a few ideas and we can definitely have some conversations about But do you have any questions about anything Paul has said? Paul Greek. I mean, there is this issue that, that was raised before about um, if you haven't done uh, any molecular biology in your course, which I think is technology. I'm sorry, yes. I'm so sorry. I'm making the table the right way up. Yeah, no, it's my fault. Um, you've just pointed roughly in the right direction. Um, there is an issue about um, as someone who hasn't done any postgraduate, uh, sorry, not postgraduate, post-school biochemistry, um, uh, guessing the, um, uh, the, the biochemistry of the cell, the, you know, how, how does a ribosome talk to a mitochondria and things like, things like that. So, uh, as I, you probably see something from me saying, have a look at a good textbook. Uh, there is a course, as you know, which some of you would have <coughs> University of Westminster uh, to introduce you to this stuff. Um, and uh, one, or two, one or two of the students have got into a bit of sticky trouble uh, just because they, they haven't uh, quite got it, just because they've, it's been, it's so new. So you've got to somehow make it not new. If it is, it's going to, it's going to be an effort. So that's, that's it. That's what I'm going to say. Thanks very much, Paul. So can we. Right. Um, what I can do is I'll just introduce two people and then we'll do the process. You've all got your bits of paper.